Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Casey and today I want to take a closer look and comparison uh, between two of the newest portable fridges to come out on the market. We have the EcoFlow Glacier and the Iceco APL 55. So both of these fridges just arrived on the market. I thought it would be a good opportunity to have a look at them side by side. I wanted to have a look at, you know, size, weight, capacity, unique features, app, uh, power consumption, all that kind of stuff. And uh, while I have them sitting here, I figured let's grab the camera and make a video and uh, maybe I can help you guys with some buying decisions uh, if you're looking for a fridge. Guys, I wanna take a quick second before we get into this video. I am trying to hit 100,000 subscribers here on my channel. It's been a huge goal of mine since I started the channel and a huge percentage of people watching the videos are not actually subscribed to the channel. It would help me out a ton if you could just take a second and hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it, especially if you find yourself coming back and watching videos and you may not even be subscribed to the channel. Okay, if you haven't seen either of these fridges before, let me introduce you quick before we start getting into the features. So this one here is made by Iceco. It is their latest uh, fridge that just came out. It's the APL 55 and then beside it we have a uh, new entry into the fridge market. EcoFlow uh, has been around for quite a while making portable battery systems and power systems. And they just introduced this new fridge, the Glacier. Now I do have a full feature uh, from this uh, that I made when it came out if you wanna see just this. But I figured, I think some of these videos are more useful to do a side-by-side -side look rather than just looking at a product on its own. But let's see how it, compares to something else that came onto the market recently. So the big difference between these two, well, there's a few big differences between these two fridges, but <laughs> the immediate difference is actually the, the capacity and how much each one can hold because the EcoFlow fridge, which uh, oh, this is a interesting, it's super hot here right now. It is uh, 35 degrees in my garage. And every time I open this, there's such a temperature difference that the seal on here is so airtight that it's a little bit hard to get open. So if you see me uh, messing around with this a little bit in the video, that's why. But sorry, back to what I was saying. So this is a 40 liter capacity fridge. Both fridges are dual zone, which means that they can be uh, either one temperature all across or they can have a divider put in them and be uh, freezing and non-freezing. So we've got a case of uh, sparkling water in here. You can see just how much room that uh, uses up. And so the Iceco fridge is a 55 liter fridge and uh, it doesn't uh, have that same suction problem uh, when I open and close it in this really hot temperature. Um, so I'm not sure, maybe this the seal isn't as airtight. I don't know, but this fridge, even though it's quite large, it has quite a large footprint and I'll get to the dimensions here in a second. Um, it is a 55 liter fridge on the inside but this internal capacity doesn't seem that much more than the EcoFlow. We've got a 12 pack of uh, sparkling water here on one side and then this side is set to freezer, minus 15 degrees Celsius and minus two degrees Celsius. But then we have a little bit more space here next to the fridge section um, for some extra stuff. And just like the EcoFlow, you can remove the divider out of this as well and make it all one zone, one temperature back and forth look you guys tell me what you think you know might be a little bit hard to tell on camera but look at the size of this with cans and then the size of this with cans so the freezer section is actually slightly smaller well let me back up if you make this side the freezer section it is a little bit smaller you can make this side the freezer section and have a smaller fridge or you can make this side the freezer section and have a larger fridge or you can remove this completely and have a full fridge, fridge, a full fridge or full freezer. Uh, same goes for the Iceco, which is beeping at me because I've left the lid open too long. Um, you can have this side the fridge and this side the freezer, or this side the fridge and this side the freezer, or remove the divider and you can have it all one zone, one temperature throughout. So the one unique thing with the dividers, I'm going to pull this out without taking the basket out. So we can take this out. Um, so they both have automatic sensing. When you take the divider out, uh, they will switch to single zone on their display, which is nice. 
So there's just one temperature here now to control. Um, and then it will switch back to a dual zone as soon as we put this lid in. Now, lid, uh, sorry, divider. Line that up. Now, the thing, the big difference between these two fridges is the EcoFlow has a divider as well, but they have a unique little feature that you can actually, well, it dings at you to tell you it took it out, but you can actually store this in the lid of your fridge so you don't lose it. And if you need to switch back and forth, where the Iceco lid, you have to remove, there's nowhere to store it up here. You basically have to carry this around somewhere if you wanna be switching back and forth between fridge, freezer, or back and forth between single zone and dual zone. So kind of nice little uh, feature that EcoFlow has built into theirs. Um, but the footprint of these are fairly similar. Now the, the EcoFlow has a unique feature, uh, two very unique features I'll get to uh, in a second once we kind of go through the dimension and build and fit and finish of these. Um, I'll show you. But this is a 55 liter fridge. This is a 40 liter fridge. Now, let me get my measuring tape out. I wanna show you something that is kind of interesting with the EcoFlow, kind of interesting. Well, if you have a Jeep, like a Jeep Gladiator, like I do, um, and you're trying to put a fridge in the bed under a tunnel cover, there aren't really any fridges that you can get that you can actually close a tunnel cover and it not be too tall. Now the Iceco is taller than the Glacier, but if we take our measuring tape out, you'll see, uh, where's a good spot to show you the high point here. So the top of the Glacier is just under 17 and a half inches. And that is a magic number because the bed of the Gladiator, the top of it is 17 and a half inches. So if you have a tunnel cover and you wanna secure your gear and put your fridge under there, you can actually put the EcoFlow and I bet you could probably take these feet off. I don't know if it will affect any airflow, but it actually has another half an inch of feet. So you could actually get this under a tunnel cover, whereas the Iceco fridge is actually coming in at 19 and a quarter inches. So you couldn't put this in the bed of your Gladiator or any other pickup truck that's 17 and a half inch box side and put a tunnel cover and close it over top of this. The Iceco fridge looks more rugged. The, these are metal sides. Uh, it's got a metal top. It has bumpers on the corners as well down here uh, below. It has little tie downs, which if you wanted to tie something down to your fridge or attach something to it, you do. It has retractable or flip up, flip down handles. So they're fairly low profile. That's about it sticks out about an inch from the side of it. Um, and then it flips down. And then they also have the ability to plug it in on both sides. So we'll talk about power in a second, but we have a uh, plug on one side, 12 volt plug on one side, USB ports on one side. So on this side, we also have a 12 volt plug, the 110 or wall power, and then more USB. So you can actually wire this to either side of the fridge, depending on what your setup is like. But when you plug the 12 volt in, you'll see here in a second, you can't plug into the 110, it actually blocks blocks it the way they've designed it. Then we also have this really kind of stout handle here, and we've got these metal latches that you have to undo both of them before you can lift the lid up. And then we've got a light on both sides. Now this, as you see, opens in this one direction. This lid's not reversible, and you have to have quite a bit of clearance to be able to open that fridge fully if you have something above it because it opens long way. Above this fridge to open the lid all the way, approximately 29, 29 inches or so with these little tabs. So you need quite a bit of uh, room above this fridge to be able to open it. So the EcoFlow is a plastic body. It has plastic handles that are fixed um, it has an optional kit, which I have bolted on here, and this is a 
towing handle, and I'll explain why you may want this in a second. Now, and then, so this is all plastic. The lid only opens one direction, but it opens lengthwise rather than widthwise. We don't have any any corner guards or anything like that. It's just plastic, plastic corners, plastic handles. Now you can remove these handles. You can pull these little cover pieces off and unbolt them. And then uh, same thing on this side. For power and plugging this in, we have one connection here on, on this, this side. So this is a uh, XT60 connector, I believe. And whether you're powering this off of 12 volt or solar panels or 110, it uses the same plug. So you do need EcoFlow's uh, AC to DC converter to plug into here if you want to uh, charge this off of wall power um, or it's a uh, 12 volt plug here I'll show you so for the uh, so for the Iceco fridge we've got the 12 volt plugged in uh, to an EcoFlow river this is a regular 110 plug it's just a standard three prong plug but for the EcoFlow we've got a 12 volt connector to the XT60 connector for plugging into your vehicle. And then this is the uh, converter that I was telling you about. So this plugs into the wall. There's a cord that plugs into the wall there. And then it uses the same, the same XT60 connector to plug into the EcoFlow. So you've got your, your different options. And then as well, EcoFlow solar panels can plug in there as well. And, and <laughs> that kind of leads me to, so before I tell you about the EcoFlow Glacier's little trick. Uh, we'll measure the lid and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something really cool about this fridge. So just back to dimensions. So back to dimensions, the lid on the EcoFlow, with it being 19 and a half inches, then only needs about 14 and a half to 15 inches above it to actually open. To, to actually open the fridge. So that is uh, something to think about because if you have this uh, in the bed of your truck, maybe you have a lower rack, you need quite a bit more room. Let me show you side by side to be able to open the ice coat fridge. Now, look at that. So that's quite a bit of a height difference to be able to fully open either of these fridges. They are fairly heavy if you're gonna move them in and out. They're not like a cooler. They weigh about 50 pounds unloaded so they are kind of heavy to carry around the ice co weighs about the same as the the eco flow so you're not going to just want to grab them easily and pull them out now what's nice about eco flow is they actually have a wheel kit that they attach two big wheels here and you can take this and drag it around ice co has like a little cart that you can buy for it uh they're both add-ons the wheel kit and the handle which i just showed you that comes out the side uh, you take this pull it out, and then you lift it up on its wheels and you can drag it around. That's an add on. Iceco has a cart that you can drop this on and drag it around. So they kind of have their both, both have options to be a bit portable, but overall dimensions, just so we're clear, uh, the width of this is about 18 inches or so. And the length of it, is going to be with all the handles and stuff around around 29 inches or so and the EcoFlow with its handles sticking out the sides if you don't take them off is going to be about 30 inches and the width there's no extra handles or bumpers or anything is going to be 14 and a half inches like we said it's 17 and a half inches tall and the ice co is around 19 and a half inches tall or so. Let's talk about the big secret that the EcoFlow has. It actually has two big secrets. So you're giving up some capacity, you're giving up a little bit of capacity over the Iceco. The Iceco looks really nice. This is a really rugged design. Um, the, the EcoFlow is IPX4 rated. Uh, there is no IPX rating on the Iceco APL55, um, but they're both kind of rated for like light rain, light dust, uh, but this has an IP rating, this does not. 
Uh, you don't want to leave them out in torrential downpours. You don't want to drop them in a lake. They're not uh, fully submersible, but if they get splashed or anything like that, they should be good. But EcoFlow does have that IP rating. So EcoFlow's big secret, one of the big secrets. So this is basically a dual zone fridge, but as you can see, I have it plugged in to the 12 volt port on my EcoFlow River. The EcoFlow Glacier is not plugged into anything and it's running. So what it has, if you wanna have a closer look at this, uh, go check out my full feature video on the EcoFlow. But on the back here, it has a little flip down and it has a little eject button. And this is a 298 watt hour battery, about the same size, same capacity as that River 2 over there. Um, and this is a hundred dollar add-on, so it's not included with the fridge, but you add it on for a hundred bucks. And then you can run your fridge for 25 to 40 hours, depending on the outside ambient temperature and everything. Now I have been running this fridge. Oh, it's got to reconnect because we just put the battery back in. Um, I've been running this fridge all of day. We're at about 47%. Um, after I'm going to say about seven hours and it is hot today it is 30 plus degrees. It is cooking here in my garage. So I have been running this in dual zone at minus two and minus 15. Uh, this is going to equalize again, but just like the ice co fridge, which is actually running at five and minus four all of a sudden for some reason. Maybe because we had it open so much, but um, that'll cool back off. This is a 268 watt hour battery. Let me double check. 256 watt hour. So this is a little bit smaller and this is down to 22%. They've both been running about the same time. I started them at about 11 AM. It's now six o'clock. So they've been running for seven hours off of that. Now what's nice about the EcoFlow is I can plug in the solar panels and the solar panel, 100 watt panel, will keep this topped off and actually charge it in a few hours, and then it will run overnight. Once the sun goes, once the sun goes down, um, it'll run overnight, and then when the sun comes back out again, there you go. This, the ice co, you need to plug into something, whether it's your vehicle, 12 volt system, wall power, or a portable power system. You need to plug it into something. So if you're going to be, you know, getting that cart and dragging it around. Well, you need a you need power to go with it. The uh, EcoFlow has built-in power, and uh, I don't think honestly, like the capacity doesn't seem that much smaller. 15 liters doesn't seem like that much less space, and I like that the you can make a freezer zone smaller because you know usually I only want to throw a few things in the freezer, and I want to have a larger fridge versus giving up once you've committed to having a uh, freezer zone you've got your freezer zone which is the same size as your fridge but then you have this little bonus space but then you have to have a cable connected to this and you have to have a port portable power system or your vehicle or your camper or something like that that you can plug this into that maybe um, doesn't make a big difference to you with your setup but all I have to do is throw this in the back of my gladiator I don't have to plug it into anything when I get to camp I can plug in the solar panels charge it up and uh, I don't have to have any wiring. And if you have solar panels on top of your rooftop tent, just connect them up to the fridge and it'll keep your fridge always charged and running even when you're parked at home before your next adventure. Uh, the Ice Co, you'll need to have something that's being charged. Uh, you know, if you want your fridge always running in your vehicle, uh, you have to have this plugged into something that has a charge that maybe has solar panels. You could have a river too um, in your vehicle as well. And uh, have that charged off the of solar panels, which is which would be all right, I think. EcoFlow Glacier has another little trick up its sleeve. All right, this thing is cooling back down. And this is what you've probably been looking at in the background, the ice maker. Now this ice maker, you can fill with water, turn this ice maker feature on right here, and this will create a bunch of ice cubes, like actual ice cubes, not little tiny, little squares that we've seen in other fridges before, but like big chunky ice cubes in about 12 minutes. There are a couple little caveats with this. If you're running this off of 12 volt, you need to have the battery installed for it to be able to make those ice cubes. But if you're running it off 110 and you don't, it, it can make them just fine. 
And what's nice is you don't have to carry ice around. You can just make it on demand because it makes it so quickly, which is super cool. And you don't have to take up any room inside your fridge to store ice. You just make it whenever you want. Um, you could make ice. You could make ice cubes in the ice zone as well, but that will take several hours like any other fridge. And same with the uh, ice co fridge. You can make ice cubes in here as well. You can just set one side to be a freezer, but that means you have to set one side to be a freezer. If like what I usually have my fridges set up, they're all fridge zone, bring lots of drinks, lots of food. Occasionally I need a freezer. Now there is another self-powered fridge that's coming out from Anchor. But what's funny about the Anchor fridge, I actually went to look at purchasing one because I don't have a, a business relationship with Anchor at all for making videos. It's on a, a crowdsourcing site, like a Kickstarter. Like why does a company like Anchor need to have a Kickstarter for a new product? Like they're a billion dollar company, which seems kind of weird. Where Iceco you can buy right off their website or off Amazon. Same with the EcoFlow Glacier you can buy right off their website or off Amazon. Um, and I will include links if you want to check these out down in the description. Um, I think I actually have a discount code for either of these if you click on the link. Um, so check it out. Go check out, uh, you know, if you want to go get deep dive into the specs, stuff like that. Um, but you can uh, find both of these down in the description. And as well, if you want to have a look at the EcoFlow River uh, 2, which is a great little portable power supply, super light. And it's great for powering things like fridge, fridges, uh, if you need USB ports, it's actually got 110. It's got a little inverter in there if you need some 110 power. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So the app, uh, there's a huge difference between the app. This is the first Iceco fridge I've actually seen with an app. EcoFlow has a very nice app for all of their products. So let me show you the EcoFlow app right here. So this is actually all the devices I have uh, in the garage here and and we can click on our glacier and we can connect to it here and see its current temperatures. So you can see that it's minus 15 and minus two on both sides. We can actually start the making ice from the application itself. We can see how much power it has remaining in it on the, in the top left corner. My thumb doesn't reach all the way up there, um, but we can change the temperature if we want. We can actually see exactly which zone is which temperature, which is really great. We can turn the fridge off and put it into standby mode, which um, is handy. And then they actually have all the settings in here. You can change the name of it. I always name them kind of stuff related to me, but you can uh, turn the beep on and off screen timeout. Both of them do have, both these fridges do have car uh, battery protection, uh, which means that it won't operate below a certain voltage so that you can actually start your vehicle if it's uh, powering off of your vehicle. You can change the temperature units and then through here you can upgrade the firmware. Now EcoFlow does upgrade their firmware quite often uh, and fix little bugs and change configurations. Now, now let me show you the app for the ice coat. Now this is actually just called Car Fridge. It was actually kind of hard to find on the app store, on uh, my Android app store. It does tell you what the left and right temperature is, but I don't really know which is the left and which is the right side because you could be on either side of this fridge. The app is much, much more basic looking. Um, you can see what the uh, current temperatures are. Uh, you can change this and set it to, I can't do anything. You can turn this off here. You can click the status, which really, is, so you can click this. So we're on the status side. We can click the settings. So we can change the left room and the right room and whatever that is and the temperature control whether you want to set this onto eco mode or not, uh, which temperature units you want to use, and it was well, it has battery protection. Um, but there's no firmware updates or anything. It's a very, very, very basic app. So let's, uh, so as far as pricing goes, the Glacier, you pretty much want to buy it with a battery. I think one of its big features is its ability to power itself. So that is a uh, $100 add on to the price of the fridge. But right now, the price of the Glacier is $11.99 with the battery. Um, that, I think, is only on for a few more days. The um, Iceco fridge is $8.59 on their website. Uh, if you use the link in the description below, you'll get a bit of a discount off on that as well. So that'll bring the price down. Um, but if you have to add a portable power system in, like the River, the River is $210. These are US pricing. Um, 
for you guys that are subscribed to the channel, you know I'm in Canada, so I usually talk Canadian pricing, but in this video, I just wanna talk about US pricing. You're kind of about the same price. You're looking maybe around $1,000 to $1,100, uh, depending on what sort of sale discounts you can get on this, if you have to add a battery system to it, but you don't have to buy the battery. But same with the Glacier, you don't have to buy the battery. It's a $100 US add-on, um, but I think for the two fridges to be comparable, you kind of, should have the battery. You wanna be able to make ice when you're plugged into 12 volt. You wanna be able to, uh, you know, just charge this thing off of solar, always have it topped up and running. It's a really kind of cool feature. So let me know down in the comments which uh, fridge you guys are using. Um, I'd love to hear uh, what sort of is the popular go-to fridge. Uh, what features you liked? Do you think some of the new EcoFlow Glacier features like ice and built-in battery are worth having in a fridge? Or do you wanna stick with something that has more of a robust uh, shell and uh, is from a company that's been making fridges for quite some time. This is EcoFlow's first fridge. And let me know what you guys are running for fridges and what size fridges you take, how long, how many days you, you get out of them. These 55 liter and 40 liter fridges are quite large, um, unless you're taking like a family out and you're going for a week. They do have a lot of capacity for a lot of stuff in them, so. And uh, help me hit 100,000 subscribers, guys. I would appreciate it a ton. Hit that subscribe button and uh, leave a like. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video.